Multicentric Castleman's disease is a fascinating clinical presentation. As I, uh, it's a disease that can be incredibly diverse, ranging from uh, very minimal symptoms related to just uh, the, uh, either the detection uh, radiographically or clinically of enlarged lymph nodes to a fulminant case of multi-organ system failure requiring intensive care uh, uh, you know, uh, support. Um, we don't understand the reasons for the diverse clinical manifestations of multicentric Castleman's disease, but we know they exist. There are some who have thought that the plasma cell variant of multicentric Castleman's disease is more aggressive. It presents more fulminantly. Um, there are others who have also seen that presentation with the Highland vascular variant. So I don't think that the variant, the histologic variant itself, is the only factor that governs the severity of multicentric Castleman's disease. I think there are other factors that we clearly don't understand. The symptoms of multicentric Castleman's disease can all be attributable to the overproduction of interleukin-6. So uh, certainly the enlarged lymph nodes is a consequence of the in increased interleukin-6 production, but also you, in the more severe cases of the disease, you tend to see things like um, uh, respiratory failure, and that often occurs in the setting of interleukin-6 causing a capillary leak syndrome, uh, where, uh, again, uh, fluid and whatnot is, um, uh, is, is, uh, is, is spaced into the lungs um, through leaky capillaries. That same mechanism, we think, can occur in the kidney and lead to renal failure, and there are a number of um, associated kidney diseases that can be seen um, largely due to interleukin-6 overexpression um, in the kidney causing renal failure. And similarly, patients can present with a tremendous amount of ascites or third spacing of fluid from these leaky capillaries as a consequence of overexpression of interleukin-6. There were current high fevers, the night sweats, um, uh, uh, sky-high uh, inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein or the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, the ESR, all again are attributable to these IL-6, uh, interleukin-6 overexpression. What's interesting is that I, there's not a direct correlation even between measuring interleukin-6 in the plasma and the severity of clinical symptoms, and we don't understand why that is. There are some patients that will have a near normal interleukin-6 level, but yet have clear signs of interleukin-6 overexpression, where there are other patients who have levels which are very high. There may be ma many reasons for that. Um, one might be that interleukin-6 may only be produced locally, um, for, for instance, in the lymph node or in the lung, and therefore is not measurable in the plasma. Or we also know that there are other important cytokines um, that are also playing a role, things like VEGF, um, that also play a role and, and are also um, uh, improperly regulated in the setting of Castleman's disease. So again, a wide clinical variety of uh, manifestations in multicentric disease, um, ranging from and usually including enlarged lymph nodes and constitutional symptoms, but sometimes including more severe symptoms like renal failure, respiratory failure, massive ascites because of over, overexpression of interleukin-6. The prevalence of multicentric Castleman's disease is difficult to estimate as there is no, uh, up until recently, there were no routine coding systems that captured the frequency of multicentric Castleman's disease. There have been some estimates about the total frequency of Castleman's disease in the population, and those estimates are imprecise but range from maybe around 1,000 patients to 30,000 across the United States. Um, we think that multicentric disease represents maybe about 30% of all of the Castleman's cases. So it's the minority, um, uh, but uh, again, if you apply those numbers of 30% to anywhere between 1,000 and 30,000, it's a pretty rare disease. Um, one would think that really no more than 10,000 cases prevalent in the United States. And in terms of incidence, it's very hard to measure that, but um, probably in the order of several hundred cases per year. The complications of Castleman's disease, especially the multicentric version, can be, um, again, very diverse, but very significant. So the, I would say the most severe complication of multicentric Castleman's disease can be multi-organ system failure. Um, I've had a number of patients present to the emergency department with fevers, enlarged lymph nodes, and within hours under observation, progress to multi-organ system failure. These complications are, uh, again, mediated by interleukin-6 overexpression um, and are caused by capillary leak uh, leading to uh, respiratory failure, renal failure, uh, and oftentimes massive ascites. So that's, I would say, the most severe complication of multicentric Castleman's disease. That's an immediate complication. 
Longer term, there are other severe complications of multicentric Castleman's disease. One severe complication long term of having multicentric Castleman's disease is that there is evidence to support that, uh, that there's some degree of immunosuppression and patients succumb to uh, 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 overwhelming bacterial and viral infections more commonly than patients without multicentric Castleman's disease. Um, and finally, I would say, in a small proportion of multicentric Castleman's disease patients, there is the risk for progression to lymphoma. This has been most well described for the HIV-associated human herpes virus 8 associated multicentric Castleman's disease. And under those circumstances, when the disease has not been treated, some prospective studies would suggest that up to 25% of patients every two years will progress to an aggressive diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Um, whether this remains true of the other multicentric Castleman's disease variants, we don't know. But we certainly know that a severe long-term sequela of HIV human herpes virus 8 associated Castleman's disease is the development of lymphoma. So I would say that those are the most common and most severe long-term sequelae, but I think that there are also other complications of multicentric Castleman's disease. Um, in my experience, patients experience debilitating fatigue, oftentimes uh, leading them to, to be disabled, not able to work, not able to enjoy uh, you know, their, their sort of activities of daily living and being with their families. Um, at the same time, I would say um, that in addition to that debilitating fatigue, um, there can be a, a tremendous amount of pain and discomfort, pain in joints, uh, so long-term joint pain, I think, is something that's often suffered by patients with Castleman's disease. Uh, and in addition to that, um, the, um, the, uh, the night sweats and the other sort of just, uh, you know, um, constitutional symptoms associated with Castleman's disease can have severe long-term effects on individuals. Uh, I've seen cases of very severe depression accompanying Castleman disease, and I had previously thought that these were just the consequences of a long chronic illness, but uh, there is now some emerging evidence that interleukin-6 plays a role uh, in mediating uh, some of the signs of depression. So I think as we learn more about the disease, we may learn about some of the associated symptoms, but on the least severe side, I would say some of the complications of the disease include uh, fatigue that can be disabling, uh, chronic, you know, battling with sweats and night sweats, um, and on the more severe side, uh, multi-organ system failure and progression to lymphoma.